Good evening. The Supreme Court today raised tough questions on a report by the OCCRP or Organized Crime and Corruption Project against the Adani Group. In the hearing today, the Supreme Court asked the petitioner Prashant Bhushan several tough questions. In fact, the court said that newspaper reports can't be taken as facts, referring to several of the articles which have come out making allegations against the Adani Group. The court said that um, the petitioner cannot level charges on SEBI the Securities and Exchange Board of India without proof and told Mr. Bhushan, what proof do you have against the Adani group? The Supreme Court also repeatedly wanted to know about steps being taken to protect small investors in the face of allegations such as those which have been raised. The court's order has been reserved. My colleague uh, Arvind Gunasekra joins us now for uh, more on this. Uh, Arvind, uh, you know, I mean, fairly, fairly strong remarks against Prashant Bhushan, what exactly were the allegations that he made and how did the court respond? There's no Supreme Court has a reserved verdict on a batch of pleas seeking investigation into Hindenburg report on Adani group of companies. Uh, today, Supreme Court took cognizance of SEBI's report. SEBI told the Supreme Court uh, that based on, uh, based on Hindenburg report, SEBI initiated investigation into almost 24 uh, issues uh, pertaining to Adani group of companies. Of those 24 issues that were taken up for investigation, investigation has been completed in 22 issues and, and on remaining two issues, the investigation is currently underway. That's on number one. Supreme Court also wanted to uh, uh, get answers from SEBI on two other issues. Second uh, uh, issue regarding the regulatory framework of SEBI. So Supreme Court asked SEBI uh, what were the recommendations from expert committee on uh, on strengthening the regulatory framework of SEBI for which SEBI told that whatever the recommendations that were made by uh, expert committee, Supreme Court appointed expert committee on this regulatory uh, uh, framework, uh, Central and also SEBI, Finance Ministry and also SEBI, both of them have taken all the recommendation uh, on record and both of them will be working on the recommendations of the uh, SEB, uh, of the Supreme Court appointed committee to strengthen the regulatory framework of SEBI. Third thing is very important, Vishnu. It's on the third issue that Supreme Court wanted SEBI to uh, work more on this particular aspect that pertains to uh, uh, protecting the interests of small investors uh, whenever short sellers come up with such reports attacking a, a corporate or a company. And that's why Supreme Court asked SEBI to work uh, to ensure that the interests of small investors are protected uh, when when short sellers go uh, on such an uh, such an attack against any particular corporate. Uh, on uh, Prashant Bhushan, Prashant Bhushan told the Supreme Court that uh, he does not or his or the petitioners they do not have trust in the SEBI uh, report because they said that uh, DRI way back in 2014 wrote to SEBI about some of the issues pertaining to Adani group of companies and SEBI has not been doing enough uh, since 2014. This is something pertaining to SEBI. And also regarding the expert committee, Supreme Court appointed expert committee, uh, the petitioners through Prashant Bhushan also raised questions on the integrity of the some of the members, especially on two of the members, uh, Prashant Bhushan raised question for which Supreme Court said that these members were appointed way back in March and these members were appointed by Supreme Court itself, not by SEBI. And uh, the members submitted the report in May, but the objections on the membership of all these members were raised only in September this year. And that's why Supreme Court said that allegations cannot be made uh, randomly without any basis. Coming to uh, on the on the specific merit of this particular case, Supreme Court asked Prashant Bhushan uh, on what evidence uh, does he have uh, in order to substantiate his claims that SEBI has not done enough investigation for which he said he cited two reports, one OCCRP report and also Hindenburg report for which Supreme Court said that Hindenburg report cannot be taken as a gospel of truth. One, because Hindenburg is not before the Supreme Court and also very importantly, uh, any report that has that have been published by journalists or Hindenburg, they do not have evidentiary value for SEBI to take it on record for any kind of a quasi-judicial process. Coming to the OCCRP report, Solicitor General appearing for SEBI raised some pertinent questions on OCCRP for which he told the Supreme Court that center SEBI reached out to OCCRP asking for more detail, more details pertaining to its report but OCCRP refused to share any data, any report. Instead, they diverted SEBI towards an NGO linked to Prashant Bhushan and that's why he said that if at all if there is any conflict of interest that is with Prashant Bhushan and OCCRP and OCCRP report uh, cannot be taken at face value because several reports are being published outside India in order to influence the policies in India and that's why SEBI cannot act per se on the reports. So hearing both the side argument, today's Supreme Court has reserved its orders on a batch of pleas.
All right. Thanks very much, Arvind, for sharing those details with us. I'm now joined by Jane Gupta, former executive director uh, of SEBI. I'm also joined by uh, Tehseen Ponawala and Desh Ratan Nigam <coughs> as well. Mr. Gupta, uh, on the point on SEBI, the Supreme Court's observation that you cannot level charges on SEBI without proof. Uh, and this is something that came up repeatedly. What proof do you have, the court asked, against the Adani group? Um, also, it was improper to doubt members of a court-appointed panel. So, how would you look at some of these three key observations made by the Supreme Court? Given a choice, I would say that one cannot lay charges against anybody, be a small individual or influential individual. And leveling a charge against institutions which are regulated, regulatory such as statutory body is all the more serious aspect. So I would say anyone while leveling charges against anybody or any institution must have a substantial proof or belief that whatever charges are being leveled, the person have a belief in himself. And I think the court was very clear that it could see that the charges that are being leveled have no base. It is based on something which has appeared somewhere and that too which I have been maintaining right from day one that credibility of Hindenburg report was in doubt because of the intent with which it was done, the timing of the report was just before the FPO of Adani Group and Indian budget. So that are the two aspects which makes the credibility of the report ab initio in doubt. But having come this far and having SEBI investigated something and my own company had also published a report where we said very clearly that all the allegations that the loans will be bad, that they will run away, all these were not verified. The only thing we could not do was the allegations of round tipping or something because we do not have it. But SEBI has come to a conclusion and whatever SEBI committee has found. So I believe that they have done wonderful work and this is where the thing stands unless something comes from tomorrow because today none of us would say that we have got a hundred percent formation or knowledge but we will very clearly say that so far so now whatever supreme court has observed with correct and i would say i am very happy with one observation which said that the regulator cannot base its investigation on media report and that to media reports appearing from somewhere far corner of the world where you have no locus tenda, you cannot proceed against that. Okay. Uh, Desh Ratan Nigam, one of the key points against Prashant Bhushan, which was raised in the, you know, during the observations and in the arguments, was, um, uh, was on his own NGO. And the allegation was that he had sought a pray, probe based on his own NGO's report. Uh, could you get into that a little bit more? Uh, Vishnu, in fact... Uh the credibility of Mr. Bhushan was, you know, shattered in the court today. With the kind of line of questioning the CGI and the judges did, is, 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 let me tell you as a lawyer, this would certainly hurt my image if I had been a lawyer. And certainly without any evidence and proof, when you go before a court, make wild allegations, and when you ask for a report from OCCRP, they, you know, divert him to Prashant Bhushan's NGO. You know, throwing ball from one court to the other without getting at to the substance of the matter and no evidence because this was speculative allegations without any, you know, substantial evidence or not even an iota of evidence. You can't do that. And then you were asking for a fishing inquiry. Fishing inquiry is never permitted in a court that we have made an allegation. There is no evidence. You go and find a proof. That kind of fishing inquiry is never permitted in court. It is not allowed. And, and let me tell you, this was exactly what was being done, politically motivated. And yes, this uh, question which was, you know, uh, the credibility of SEBI was upheld. Especially when out of 24 matters, 22 investigations have been completed. Two, they have asked for information from foreign regulators. So they are doing the job, perfect job, and, and you can't question the credibility. You know, Desh, the second, up one more point. I just want to go back to what you were talking about. As I understand it... Um, SEBI Act, the argument which was raised in court uh, was that Mr. Bhushan, through his own NGO, uh, right, was actually behind a lot of this. So, 
when the investigators in this case or the, the solicitor general went to the OCCRP and said, can you share details or data with us? The OCCRP referred the matter to Prashant Bhushan and yes, his NGO. So the so argument which was raised in court is that I, I, perhaps the word connivance wasn't used, but uh, w how would Mr. Bhushan's position be tenable in arguing this case at all? Certainly, you know, this raises a very important question of conflict of interest. Conflict of interest, based, yes. Based on collusion and connivance, it appears every is colluding and conniving and trying to, especially as uh, uh, the former executive director of SEBI clearly pointed out about the timing also. Before the budget and when the SPO of the Adani group was coming out, the purpose was to, because Hindenburg, we all know it's a short seller. It manipulates the market and then later tries to sell it and make profit out of it. And they have done so in the US also, where they are facing penalties and everything. So we got to be very careful. The conspiracy went quite deep and Adani was targeted through Adani, the government was targeted. So the entire, see India is unstoppable today so far as its economy is concerned. It's marching ahead. So somehow everybody gets into it and especially you you saw that Mohima, uh, Mohima matter also where Adani was targeted specifically. So all these things and it goes quite deep. I believe it got uh, the criminal investigation must start in this particular case. You sure. will find the chain being, uh, you know, connected, all the wires being connected and the real culprits will then come out. You know, Tehseed, almost in a sense, and I should hasten to add the order of the court is still reserved. But if this does actually appear in a court order, then it almost seems to be Rafal part two, where so many allegations were made against the government of connivance and so many other things. And then the Supreme Court just destroyed those allegations. And here too, the observations of the Chief Justice extremely strong. I mean, to suggest that, you know, where is the evidence? On what basis are you going after members of the Supreme Court appointed panel? Um, how do you assume that government appointed uh, agencies or government entities, I should say, for example, SEBI, uh, lack credibility on what basis. So, you know, I mean, w where does that leave the opposition who's been harping, which has been harping on many of the points in Hindenburg? I think you're on mute, Tehseed. Good evening, Vishnu. Go ahead. So yeah. Thank you. There are two issues that we need to understand. First of all, I'm extremely, extremely uncomfortable, and Deshat and Nigamji will, shine, will, will know this, with uh, entrepreneurs being targeted in courts. It's not right. Um, simply because, and I agree with what uh, the former SEBI executive officer has said on your show, Mr. Gupta, that you cannot have a roving inquiry against any regulatory organization. Now, for, now let's go step by step. The Hindenburg report there's nothing illegal about the report. You can question the report. There's nothing illegal about the report. Short selling is a legitimate tool of the market. It's a legitimate tool. You can agree that it happened at the time the Adanis were raising capital, but it's a legitimate tool, number one. But can those allegations then be taken and stretched in a court of law? It's very uncomforting because markets like water find their own level. So people understand what to do, what not to do. When you have courts, and with humility, I bow before the judges. What is the expertise that they have? So this is great. It's gone in front. It's gone. It's going for the Adani's. I'm comfortable with that. Suppose that the judges were to suppose, like in 2G, go and strike down all licenses. It makes it very uncomfortable. Let markets find their own water. And that's why you have SEBI, ROC, and all these organizations. Number two, I have a problem with SEBI in the issue and ROC and RBI. They could have, and this is to help Mr. Adani in the sense, not uh, in terms of crony capitalism, but help the economy come out with a report much clearer. Look, if the Hindenburg allegations are money has been come has come illegally into India why shell companies into the Adani that's the base of the allegation that money didn't come in cash you could have just clarified it's come by the RBI route but you've not done it you're also sleeping on bureaucracy this bureaucracy has to be faster no but there's an answer my question who's suffering? I, I, I who's get suffering? what you're saying Are yaar, Vishnu, one second who's suffering the investors are suffering the Adani's are suffering just hold on look there's a there are gray arguments don't make this black or white these are very gray arguments so the actually regulators must be a little faster on that now let's come to the third part about it. That the opposition will target a government is a legitimate right. Should businessmen be brought into it? Again, it makes me very uncomfortable with businessmen because I, by nature, am a capitalist. I find it very uncomfortable that businessmen have gotten. Please, by all means, target governments. Governments are meant to be targeted by the opposition. But when you bring in the when you bring in corporate houses, it makes it very difficult for the function. So I think 
all of us as a polity must sit down. But this is not the first time it's happening. It's been done by the BJP in Congress. Okay. It's been done in the nuclear deal. It's been done by VP Singh. So what they suggest is, and I think the way forward now is, courts should A, stay out of this. It's good that they gave a thrashing to the lawyer that they gave because he comes in every PL and creates a ruckus. The larger issue is, in between the polity and parliament, we must have certain frameworks of how this should function. And regulatory boards must get their reports faster. Now, just one last point. One of the countries where there's acquisition of shell companies, actually the finance minister stood up in their parliament and said these are not shell companies. That no, I mean, and he repeated product. those, repeated that on on an interview to yes. ATV, which, which so one, now I, who I suffered? had interviewed. Indian he investor said that word suffered. for word. I am a small retail investor. I want to put a disclaimer out. At some point, I bought a Danish. Okay, okay, okay. Te 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You, I mean, you, you, you're, you're running like a locomotive on on super fast speed. But let me go back to this Jane. This is a 5G era. We're almost at 6G, uh, anyhow. Uh, Mr. Gupta, let me, uh, let me come to you next. I think one of the most um, valuable suggestions of the Supreme Court today, in terms of questions raised, is, is enough being done to protect the small investor? Because this goes well beyond the Adani group. It goes well beyond Hindenburg. It goes to the core of what affects millions of small investors, that if there are huge allegations which are made, which are unfounded allegations, the person who is suffering is somebody who puts his or her hard-earned money into the markets and loses it. See, first of all, I would want to respond to Mr. Punamala. I never said that SEBI or any regulatory organization should not be subject to question or allegation. I said before you make allegation, you should be sure that allegations are substance. Otherwise, 7 billion people in the world can make 7 million allegations every day and there will be no function sure. possible. I, I, I I mean, I'm sure Tehseen agrees with you on I that. I second yeah. that. I said the same thing. Yeah, Tehseen agrees. So, but Mr. Gupta, yeah. to my point? Yeah, so okay, I will come to your point. See, the fact is very clear that SEBI has a role and with a clear role that protection of investor. But SEBI on its own cannot protect the investor unless the entire ecosystem works in the favor. Now look at this and what happened here. A report came from Hindenburg, which all very well know and I can all for it is a motivated report for an objective of making a killing out of the short selling by some foreign investor of the bond. That is one part. And they are very much right because there is, there is intention. But what happened? We thought that it is a gospel truth. And if you look at Hindenburg report, it was a report where it was half truth, half lie. Where they say that they took an instance of 2004 or 2005 and said that Rajesh Adani was arrested or something. But they forget to say that till Supreme Court, the court case went and he was exonerated. So when you only put up the negative thing, your intention is very clear that you want to cause negativity. But the worst part was this, that all ecosystem in the country started shouting that Hindermark is God and the report is correct. And their people made a statement that LIC doob jayega, state bank doob jayega, without even understanding what they are intending to. Now a investor who is a weak investor who does not have a power to sustain, the moment it sees that prices are falling and every ecosystem was trying to put the price falls to that investor will lose out and they will sell out but other investor who see opportunity will buy that share yes. and gain that is yeah. one part but my issue is very simple there is a law in sebi prevention of fraudulent and unfair trade practices where it say that nobody should be there who is causing any news item or anything which leads to people doing something and lo causing loss now, unfortunately, that is applicable only to the participants of the securities market. But yes. I would say that it has to have some understanding where this can apply to all those news which are deliberately put by someone here or there to cause the mayhem in the market. And that person should be held responsible yeah. for causing mayhem in the market. Um, you know, Deshrata Nigam... Uh Politically, where is this? Where does this take uh, take us? Assuming that this this does translate to large parts of what we heard today into an order, that order has been reserved. The the entire argument of so many in the opposition, particular leaders, for example, Mama Moitra, 
on allegations of crony capitalism, etc., etc., targeting the Adani group. If the Supreme Court has today said that institutions like SEBI have to be respected, that the work of these institutions cannot be belittled in the manner as has been done, right, essentially suggesting that, then where does this leave the opposition? Well, Vishnu, one thing, one of the important observations of the CGI was what steps the SEBI has been taking to prevent the stock market from volatility from such short selling reports, uh, you know, and, and especially the Hindenburg. Because today it is Adani, it could be uh, other industrial houses tomorrow, and then they can manip continue to manipulate the markets. So the steps have to be taken, and if it requires certain kind of amendments, those amendments need to be done because we got to protect investors, small, big, medium, all of them. Now, secondly, the battle of perception has to be fought in the political field and certainly this will go certainly in the favor of bjp where the baseless allegations were raised and and connecting mr modi with adani and all kinds of things were being done so certainly there is a stamp of approval from the at least supreme court says nothing was there whether it was rafael whether it was pegasus or the unconditional apology that had to be given almost lying down by the rahul gandhi so all these goes and how bjp utilizes this it will depend on the expertise of bjp because they have a ground and they must create a perception in the mind of people which the opposition is also trying to do and therefore you have certain basis with it go all out uh, you know uh, catch the bull by the horn and go in the political field uh, the next year we have an elections certainly the uh, opposition leaders will be trying to create far more other issues probably unsubstantiated as well so uh, it's the job of the bjp to effectively handle it to see that the perception goes in their favor and do not allow any kind of an advantage of the opposition. It almost seems to me, Deshrat and Nigam, that we could be transferred to a few years back when Chokidar Chodhe was the, the main sort of opposition argument. And it's, yes. it just, that fell on its head in a three-judge three, a three judge Supreme Court panel, I mean, through a unanimous verdict, Rafal fell. This is still reserved, but these are very strong observations. It almost seems that several of those arguments were baseless. Several of these arguments, the court seems to suggest, are baseless as well. I'd ask you gentlemen to wait with us as I take this short break and I'll come back to Tehseen in just a moment. Welcome back to The Big Story. We are tracking the Supreme Court today raised tough questions on a report by the OCCRP or Organized Crime and Corruption Project against the Adani Group. In the hearing today, the Supreme Court asked the petitioner Prashant Bhushan several key questions and also mentioned that newspaper reports cannot be taken as facts, that you cannot level charges on SEBI, that's the Securities and Exchange Board of India, without proof. Prashant Bhushan, the petitioner, was told, what proof do you have against the Adani Group? So several key questions asked over there. I'm joined by Deshratan uh, Nigam. Uh, Geeta Bhatt joins us as well, as does Amitabh Tiwari. Amitabh, let me come to you first. Um, I think some of the key questions raised of Prashant Bhushan were fairly striking. Uh, when he was asked to come up with the evidence, and he was told that it wasn't his place to question the credibility of those appointed in the Supreme Court panel to look at all of these allegations. How significant were these observations in the context of this case? I think these uh, statements are very significant. It is because of the fact that it shows that the Supreme Court or the Indian judiciary has not taken the issues lightly. They have appointed a panel in the leadership of SEBI, which is investigating this case. The status report has already been submitted. Clean sheet has been given in 22 out of 24 issues. And now only balance two issues are are remaining. So, from that angle, coming to say that there is a conflict of interest after five to six months of appointment of the committee, and it is also trying to show or tell Prashant Bhushan that he cannot be the investigating agency. Does he have proof? If or he has any proof, then that should be submitted to SEBI, which is investigating the case. See, the conflict of interest question, I mean, the reports of foreign brokerages cannot be construed as gospel truth, is what the Supreme Court is saying, because there may be or can be a conflict of interest there as well. And in a Hindenburg report, the conflict of interest is fairly open because they were 
they are short sellers and the objective of the report was to make money when the share price of adani group falls supreme court is also uh, lambasting prashant bhushan for questioning the sanctity of our institutions the court has appointed a committee it is investigation it is investigating when it is about to submit its final report the petitioners are coming up with this conflict of interest theory which is not good and that is why they have made some very strict comments with regards to this case indeed in the hearing today indeed uh, geeta bhat one of the key points was um, sebi told the judges the the sebi lawyer we sought information from the occrp right this is the and the occrp asked us to contact bhushan's ngo uh, and and which is bizarre so it it uh, prima facie appears to indicate a conflict of interest doesn't it absolutely vishnuji and in fact uh, you know it is uh, it is rather sad to uh, see these observations today in the uh, supreme court and uh, the honorable judges also questioning the fact that uh, you know uh, mr prashant bhushan who is the main uh, applicant in this pim and he is the one who has been uh, raising these questions which are uh, putting uh, the government in embarrassment and also raising questions on the kind of financial transactions uh, that are taking place uh, worldwide based on a report which was generated by some private so called think tank and who has been who are funding these think tanks and there is a connection between all whether it is the george soros funded occrp and whether it is mr prashant bhushan's ngo which is supposedly supposed to give the data and it is the same person who is going and approaching to the court and raising all these questions so uh, in totality it seems that there is a larger conspiracy involved where there there you know there are certain external agencies who want to uh, put the put the government of the day and also the industrial houses uh, into an embarrassing positions with the, where there is not much proof on the paper there are only allegations which are there amitabh tiwari you are one of our finest political analysts how does this play out politically because to me uh, and as i was discussing this with deshrat and nigam earlier on it's almost like rafal part 2 Uh, earlier on there was uh, this rafal and and chokidar chore hai that entire thing was was thrown aside by as a result of what the supreme court had to say three judges over there all agreed that there was no corruption in that case this order has been reserved but assuming that what we are discussing now finds its way into the final report does this not have a political impact ahead of elections see it it does have a political impact and as you've mentioned it seems that the congress party has not taken its learnings from from the rafal deal I mean, it had raised serious allegations against the BJP government, but it didn't fly with the public because these are not bread and butter issues. First, there was no truth in it, and these were not bread and butter issues. Even after traveling for thousands of kilometers in the Bharat Jodo Yatra, if if Rahul Gandhi is still talking about issues which do not affect the common man, then what it does is that it diverts the efforts of the opposition from the main issues. to issues which are non consequential and and not true in any ways so i would say they have not taken their learnings from the rafael uh thing and this could backfire on the opposition because it seems that there is no truth in these allegations ashwari dube um you know the chief justice uh, also said we cannot treat hind the hindenburg report as a true state of affairs which is why they asked sebi to probe the uh, to 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 launch uh, a probe i think the key po- one of the key points by the supreme court in the arguments today the observations in court was that we have institutions you can't dismiss the institutions at the same time and i think this is important it's not that the supreme court said dismiss the media not at all He, what the uh, judge okay. said was that you please come with evidence where's the evidence vishnu bhai namaste Uh, very very rightly vishnu bhai you have uh, pointed out that the observation has some relevance the relevance why because based on a half backed story based on something published outside this country with the agenda 
with this set agenda in a dishonest deliberate knowingly knowingly in order to disrepute a, 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 the the uh, a, a reputation which a company has earned in years and that too and and without considering the replies which has been submitted pursuant to the allegations which you have labeled that is why honorable supreme court said that yes go ahead go ahead yes that is why honorable supreme court says that the sebi can't be asked to take a story in a newspaper even if it is financial times is a gospel truth and newspaper reports cannot form the substantiation and also cannot be considered the way to file a petition that right you have very rightly said in rafal case in chaukidar chor hai in pegasus the, the, the where was the uh, uh, evidence no evidence and prima facie evidence is based on that the petitions were filed were having no substance and vishnu bhai you see when the petition was filed honorable supreme court being the custodian of the constitution and honorable cji on its wisdom mm -hmm. formed a committee of eight best noted experts of the in their field in order to understand the allegations and also in order to see that where there is any violation of existing rules or laws as has been alleged the no, and, 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 and that this, this part uh, uh, you know uh, ashwini ji was was bizarre in fact i wanted to go across to to geeta bhat on this <laughs> one of the points mentioned by prashant bhushan was in casting aspersions against one of those in that supreme court panel who appear, appeared for the adani group in 2006 the supreme court uh, chief justice said then what stops him from appearing now in 2023 and the court went on to say will an accused lawyer never be made a judge i mean it's it's common sense right. judges right. lawyers represent everybody they're duty bound to do that right so but to right. say that they you represent a or, or b and you are therefore corrupt 20 years later what sense does it make Yes, Vishnu ji, it is it is rather bizarre uh, that this these kind of arguments were being uh, uh, put up and these allegations were being made uh, by uh, Mr. Prashant Bhushan and uh, I think the uh, honourable court very rightly questioned it. In fact, if you see that uh, the SEBI is uh, the uh, it's a statutory body and pointing fingers on SEBI is also something to which the uh, honourable court has you know has not taken it in a very nice manner. that the questions have been put on the the, the conduct of uh, sebi while taking this case rather they uh, it was mentioned by the uh, honorable chief justice of india that uh, you know these statutory institutions they are they uh, very thoroughly uh, investigate any such cases which are there and you know putting a question mark on them is something uh, which is not in the right spirit and i think that in, in a way it is uh, it is very self explanatory that uh you know a report which was generated uh somewhere thousands of kilometers away from this country which has a large number of figures but did not have any data to substantiate it and later on when the investigation was done it was found that this data apparently is has to be provided by an ngo that is run by an individual who is the uh, you know who has put uh, this pil in the supreme court so i think the dots can be very well connected and also vishnu ji i would like to put forth that in the you know in the coming time there should be certain deterrent you know for for people who come out and uh, you know consume so much of court's time in uh, in putting up cases which later on uh, you know which are actually just in the, just in the air there there is nothing to substantiate these cases probably there should be a penalty also which should be placed so that the you know courts very valuable time which could actually be given in hearing of where there are very crucial matters the time is only limited you know or 24 hours in a day yeah so such kind of provision maybe in the coming you know coming times should should be done also joined by manish uh, bariyar a political analyst at this stage uh, manish ji uh, I, i i think perhaps the the, the largest point uh, coming out of whatever the observations were in the supreme court is going beyond adani and going beyond hindenburg what steps are being taken to protect small investors because it 
in the future, if anybody makes crazy allegations, doesn't come up with any proof, goes to the Supreme Court, which says, where is the proof and there is none, the person who has ultimately suffered is the person who's silent, the small investor whose life savings are potentially gone. So if the Supreme Court is now asking what steps are being taken to protect small investors, isn't that something that actually benefits millions in this country? Absolutely. Good evening to you and good evening to my co-panelists and viewers. Uh, this is something which is very important, which has come out of Supreme Court uh, you know, observation that protect the small investors. In fact, protect all investors. Uh, this hit and run case or a hit and run job, which Hindenburg has done, and nothing substantial has come out up till now. What is, you know, what uh, one is one observes? Then I, I think uh, uh, you know uh, lessons have to be learned from here, and there has to be some regulation which would ensure the protection of investors because these are very sensitive issues, and the share prices goes up and down based on the news. So you cannot just you know kind of allege uh, uh, about a thing without having a proof and, and go scot free. So as it has happened uh, in some of the other industries where there are regulations to ensure that what kind of uh, allegations can be done, I think investor protection should be at the top of the, the mind of the, the political establishment. Uh, and and I, I welcome Supreme Court's observation on this. All right. Um, let me just go across to, to Amitabh right now. Amitabh, you know, you spoke about the Congress, but what about, we don't have Amitabh Tiwari, no, but I'll take that question to Geeta Bhatt. The Congress party has been riding on the allegations of crony capitalism. The Trinamool Congress has been riding on the allegations of crony capitalism. Does that all essentially fall flat just months before the elections? Well, uh, Vishnuji, we have uh, seen that uh, and you just mentioned it also that how the whole Rafal case and uh, and the other issues which have been raised, uh, you know, basically uh, portraying corruption as an issue which without any substantial data supporting it is something that the opposition and especially the Congress party has been doing for a very long time. Mr. Rahul Gandhi has act had actually to go out and uh, apologize in front of the Supreme Court for the allegations that he had made in the Rafal case and on other issues like Chokidar Chor hai and etc. But the point is that even in this case, the projection that was being done by the Congress party, again, they had also put a question mark on the conduct of SEBI, that the SEBI has not been able to conclude, uh, you know, its investigation in time and there are reasons for, uh, you know, uh, putting it putting it under doubt. So this, this in totality is not going to, you know, put up a, a very... Uh, good or sober picture about Congress, uh, you know, uh, in, in front of the people of the country. Why is it that the Congress party, again and again, they, wherever they have the, their government, for example, Rajasthan in Chhattisgarh, they are inviting the Adani group for making investments. And at the same time, uh, and, they and are putting up as well. allegations. One of the, large, the, 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 the largest uh, sports in the country, you know, I mean, so it, it's double standards, it's, it's cashing in on political points, right, uh, hurting the, the, right. the investment uh, atmosphere in the country, the economic growth of the country, and then it goes to the court and the court says, where's the proof? Hello? I mean, so after all of this, the court asks, where's the proof? I mean, it's, it's, it's astounding, absolutely. Uh, Manish, you had a point to make, yes. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to add what you said. Just day before yesterday, Bengal had a global summit and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ms. Amani was there and, and so were many of the other business people. I think it exposes the hypocrisy of these parties, both Trimal and Congress as well as Congress party. While on one hand, they privately uh, court these uh, industrialists and publicly with the innocent people, they keep harping on their uh, negativities or they keep accusing the, the ruling party or the BJP all on having hand in gloves. And, and, and that's a wrong acquisition. I think someone has to really uh, call this this entire thuggery out. Right? Well, let's wait for the uh, order. It has been reserved. Yes. But if some of Absolutely. these observations, but, very uh, strident you know, ones, by the court, striking ones by the court, do appear, then we'll see. Only interrupting because I have to take a break. As usual, no time. Television rules. Uh, we'll take this short break. There's a lot more coming up. Thank you very much for being with us.